Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am just going to jump right into this video and get started. So I am priming my face with the Tarte Clean Slate Timeless Primer, which is a smoothing primer. So it's gonna make sure that your foundation goes on nice and smooth. Usually pore filling primers leave my skin really matte and kind of dry. So I like to use on top a more radiating primer to give some glow back into my skin. So for that I'm using Lush's Skin Tint in Feeling Younger, which leaves a really beautiful pearly finish. For foundation, I'm using the Fruit Pigmented Healthy Foundation by the brand 100% Pure. It was my first time trying it and I actually really, really liked it. It has sun protection and it's made with antioxidant rich superfruits. It's full coverage, it is a cream to satin finish, it's gluten free, cruelty free, 100% natural, and 100% vegan, so I was all about that. The only downside that I had with this foundation is that it kind of sits on top of the skin and makes your pores really visible. It doesn't look as natural as some of my other full coverage foundations, but I'll try with a brush next time to see if that kind of helps. To conceal my under eyes, I'm taking the Urban Decay Naked Skin Weightless Concealer, which I'm sure I don't really need to say much about. We all know this shit is good. And I'm making sure not to miss those inner corners because I get a lot of blue tones there. And I'm also placing it on my eyelids to act as a primer. Then I'm taking my It Cosmetics Eye Lift in a Tube, and I'm only taking the highlighter side to really highlight the face. And I'm placing that underneath the concealer in more of a triangle shape, and then blending the two together with my Damp Beauty Blender. And I know that looks like a ton of product, but the highlighter is really thin in consistency so it really just blends out into nothing but it still adds you know that element of light to the face and it just looks so beautiful and the finish is amazing then I'm going to cream contour with my NYX cream contour palette and I'm taking the contour shade and mixing some Tarte Maracuja oil in it so it's easier to blend and I know this looks really scary. <laughs> to be honest, cream contouring, I really want to like it and I just don't feel like I'm really good at it. It's something, it's like a technique I really haven't gotten the hang of. So I don't know, I just, I, this is why I do it though is to try to get better at it and experiment with it. But I feel like every time I do it, I just kind of look muddy and I don't know, maybe it's just, I'm not finding the right products or the right tones for my skin, but you know, I'm trying, I'm trying, we ain't perfect. But yeah, so then I'm just adding uh, that same highlighter to the center of my face to highlight those areas. Um, I should have done that before, but I don't know why I didn't. I'm kind of going in a weird order here, but then I'm just gonna blend that out and make it look nice and pretty. To lock that all down in place, I'm using my RCMA No Color Powder, but before I do that, I wanna get rid of any creasing that might've already happened and make sure that it's nice and smooth before you lock your powder down or else you're going to be locking in those creases, which is what you don't want. And then I'm taking my Real Technique sponge because it has the flat end. It's a lot easier for me to bake with the powder because it goes on so much more evenly because the side is flat against your skin, if that makes any sense. So you're gonna wanna let that bake for about five minutes at 350 degrees until golden brown. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We all literally sound like Rachel Ray when we talk about baking. <laughs> but anyways, no, you're just gonna let that sit and bake while you do your brows or do anything else that you wanna do, or you can wipe it off immediately, there's no rules. But I'm just going to underline the bottom of my brow with the NYX Micro Brow in the color taupe. And then for the top of the brow, lately I've been using the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade in blonde with a little tiny, uh, I think it's Coastal Sense, a little angled brush, any, any angled brush will do. And I've been defining the top of the brow with that. I feel like it just gives me a sharper look and I've just been enjoying it over the pencil lately. So that's what I'm doing here and then just brushing it out so it looks a little bit more natural. And then I'm just going to go ahead and wipe off that powder. And I'm using my Real Techniques setting brush around the eye area so I can get into every nook and cranny and make sure I don't miss any powder so I don't look powdery, you know? And I also blend out the powder on the forehead into that cream contour just to blend it a little bit more. And then I'm also using that powder to set the eyelids and prep them for eyeshadow. Then to set the brows, I'm taking my Ico Brow Gel Shape and Define, which is a tinted brow gel, so it's kind of like a darker brown, but it's still light enough and it just grabs the hair and makes them more natural looking and more hair-like, if that makes sense. And then I'm taking my Tarte Bronzer, I forgot what it's called, but I will list all the products in the down bar. And I'm just taking that on my cheekbones and you know, putting that over that cream contour. And I really like this bronzer. It does have a sheen or like a, a slight shimmer to it, but it just really gives you that nice sun-kissed 
look and I'm also taking that down my neck just to make sure that everything matches. I felt like my body was a slightly darker than my face so I'm just kind of giving myself a little tan. And I will admit, watching the footage back, I'm not happy with how my forehead looks. It looks like the bronzer was not blended out and it's kind of a harsh line, um, but also lighting kind of affects things like that because I don't think it looked like that in person. But moving on, I'm going to take my Anastasia contour kit and I'm taking the middle shade Fawn and I'm just very lightly shading underneath my cheekbones and I'm only doing that to add more of a natural shadow color there instead of just, you know, a warm tone. Um, it just looks a little bit more natural and that's how I like to contour. And then I'm just going to bake under that because I feel like it got a little bit messy under there and the line just wasn't as sharp as I wanted it to be. Okay, so moving on to blush. This is an Amazonian 12 hour clay blush by Tarte in the shade Seduce. It's a very subtle kind of dusty rose color and I didn't want to do like a bright coral or like a terracotta. Even though I'm doing copper on the eyes, I wanted that to be the focus and not to overpower it with any crazy blush color. So that's why I just kept it nice and sweet and soft. And for highlighter, I chose the e.l.f. baked blush in Pinktastic, which is an old drugstore favorite. Very cheap, but very good and to apply that, I'm using the Real Techniques 300 Tapered Blush Brush. It's from their Bold Metals collection, which is so beautiful. And it's a blush brush, but I thought it would do better with highlighting, and I think it did the job pretty well. So I'm just applying that in all the normal places, cheekbones, nose, cupid's bow, you know. And I'm also putting that on the brow bone, a little bit more on the tip of the nose and cupid's bow, just using a smaller brush to get the pigment a little bit more concentrated and to get the application a little bit more precise. Now moving on to the eyeshadow, we're first starting out with the shade Peach Smoothie from Makeup Geek and I'm putting this on a big fluffy brush and just kind of messily running it through my crease from inner corner to outer corner. Doesn't have to be neat, this is just our first kind of transition color for the other shades. Now I'm switching to a little bit more of a precise blending brush. And this is an amazing brush because it literally does all the work for you. It's tapered and fluffy so you can place the color and blend it at the same time. So now with this color, we're basically gonna put it directly into the crease but keeping it a little bit lower than the last so as it blends up, it creates a nice gradient. And then I'm switching brushes again to a more dense one so I have a little bit more control because I want this really pretty apricot shade to be really in that crease to make some definition and I want this color to just peek out from the crease so that when I put the glitter on the lid, it still kind of shows through. And then we can start laying down some darker colors on the lid in more of a halo shape. So it kind of hugs the glitter and I don't know, I just think that looks really pretty. So I'm taking this maroon shade from the Morphe 35O palette again. And on a shader brush, I'm kind of just mapping out where I want the color to be the most pigmented and basically just where I want it. And then when I have it placed, I go back with my blending brush and go over the edges and diffuse them and make sure there are no no harsh lines and it blends up into that gradient that we already created. And then I'm going in with an even deeper color. This is more of a uh, chocolate brown shade and it's also in the same palette. And I'm doing the exact same thing, trying not to cover up all of that maroon shade. I still want that to kind of peek through. It was just easier. It was more of a transition shade for this color, honestly. But yeah, I'm basically doing the exact same thing, placing it, blending it, and then, I don't know, because I'm still waiting for the clip to end. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm applying the shade Fireball and it's a NYX Prismatic Shadow in the shade Fireball. I just said that. And I'm using a flat concealer brush to do that to really pack on this shade. And honestly, if you don't want to apply the glitter, you can just leave it like this and it's still a beautiful look. But once you have it on the lid, you're gonna wanna blend the, the darker shades. So I'm adding a little bit more onto my shader brush and pretty much just overlapping the color, making it more intense and also blending it into that lid color so it's not just, you know, harsh lines. It's nice and blended. And then you gotta blend out those lines. Again, I mean, you know, just to be safe. So moving on to the glitter, I'm using the Too Faced Glitter Glue to adhere that to my lid. And a little tip for when applying glitter is make sure the glue is completely dry before opening your eyes. That way you will prevent the glitter from having those ugly creases in them, which used to happen to me all the time. So make sure that glue is dry. And then using the edge of the brush, I'm gonna do flicking motions and kind of using a little bit of pressure to drag that glitter on the edges just to diffuse it a little bit so it's not a harsh line and it doesn't look too much like a cut crease. Then to tight line my eyes, I'm using Tarte's Lash Liner Eyeliner, which is really, really black and pigmented. 
And for the waterline, I'm doing another Tarte product. It's called the Eye Architect, and I'm using the brown liner just to kind of tone it down. And it wasn't that pigmented, so I did run that in my lashes too. And then we're gonna smudge that out with the dark brown that we used on the lid. And then I'm using this shade from the Morphe palette again to blend out the dark brown, make it more hazy and smoky, and also to really bring the warmth down there to kind of tie the look all together. And then on the other side of that brown eyeliner, there is a spongy tip with like loose eyeshadow on it, and it's a beautiful champagne color, so I pop that in the inner corner for a little bit of highlight. For my false lashes, they're in this style Robin, and they're from a company called Thrive Cosmetics, and I really like this company because for every product that's purchased, one is donated to a woman going through cancer treatment and all the lashes are named after women that they've helped and I just think that's amazing and I think that companies that have good ethics behind them deserve to be recognized and not to mention how freaking beautiful are these lashes so go check them out if you would like I will leave all their links in the description bar but moving on I'm just going to coat my top and bottom lashes with this Tarte Tartiest or Tartist mascara I never know how to say that and for the lips, I'm going to start by lining them with Urban Decay's Naked Liner. And this is actually my second time filming this look. The first time, all the footage was out of focus, so I couldn't use it and I had to refilm. And that time I did more of a light coral lip color and I liked it so much better. I don't know why I changed it, I shouldn't have, but now you get two lip options. So I will insert that footage at the end so you can decide kind of for yourself which color you like better with this look. So after lining, I applied this NYX High Voltage Lipstick in the shade Flawless, which which if you're looking for a nude, you found yourself a nude, honey. But this is way too nude for this look, I felt, so I immediately kind of took a majority of it off with a tissue. And then over top of it, I added this Tarte Tartist Glossy Lip Paint, and that made it much more of a nudie pink instead of just a plain nude. But that does complete this summer glam makeup tutorial. I hope you guys really liked it. Leave in the comments some suggestions or ideas for makeup looks that you would like to see in the future, and I will get on those. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I love you. I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.